Hello and welcome to Monaco. This is round six of the Cucumber Challenge, the championship where we drive as Narain Karthikan trying to win the World Drivers' Championship. Now I know you're wondering, why is this a night race? Well, pretty much the straight up truth is Narain Karthikan was too late in getting to the Grand Prix. Everyone was waiting up for him, but unfortunately we just couldn't wait any longer. We had to get the stand in Karun Chandok to fill in for this race. So he'll be driving the HRT and any any points that he scores today will go towards his points tally. So hopefully we can get a good result here today. This is, as I've said many times before, Monaco probably our best chance of getting a race win in this championship. So that's what we need to do. Because we waited up for Narain to come out for so long, we pretty much waited all weekend and Narain never showed up. So uh, unfortunately we didn't get anyone in for qualifying, so we will be starting from last place. So this is going to be an almighty effort for us to get points today in this championship. Uh, if I haven't mentioned already, we're also running with realistic damage on all cars, including mine. So we could see a lot of massive crashes in the opening couple of laps of this Grand Prix. It's going to be very interesting to see how it goes. But this is the setup that won us the Monaco Grand Prix in a Force India just a couple of weeks ago. But today, we're trying to do the exact same thing in a HRT. So here we are, on the grid of Monaco. This is our best chance to win a race. Hopefully, we can pull it off. And away we go here in Monaco. Looks like we got off to a fairly decent start, but we're not going to take that anywhere into Turn 1. We're just going to take it very easy. We know that the realistic damage can absolutely murder us in this race, and we just want to get through this first lap without any damage or any dramas. So already into Turn 1, we've already picked up one place. That's Guido van der Gaard. And just up ahead, we've got Charles Peake and our teammate, Jules Bianchi. So, so far in this early stages of this race, it looks like a few cars are banging into each other. And I'm just trying my best not to touch anyone, as this realistic damage is so sensitive. And just one little touch can put you out of this Grand Prix. So, so far in the early stages of this first lap, we still have all 22 runners in this Grand Prix. And coming through the, uh, the hairpin there, we've got a lot of debris on the apex of that corner. So we've already got our first retirement. I think that might have been a McLaren of Jensen Button. So we're now down to 21 runners in this Grand Prix and we are now up in 18th place. And we're going to go up the inside of Bottas and Gutierrez coming into the Novo chicane. But we locked up and we're just going to break early just to uh, sort of minimize the, uh, the gain that we got there. And now we rejoin in 15th place right behind Adrian Tatil who now seems to be struggling. I think he's lost his front wing too in the calamity that was this first uh, lap. I think he probably lost it in that hairpin. And uh, yeah, he just pulls out of the way pretty much and gives us uh, 14th place. So we survived this first lap crucially without any damage. And there was another crash behind us. So I think we might be losing more runners in this Grand Prix. Yellow flags as 20 runners are now left in this race. Someone else pitted as well, which promotes us up into 13th place in this race. And our team out, Gilles Bianchi, follows us through into 14th place. So it's been... A brilliant start here for HRT, getting through the field quite nicely. And I think we do have a lot of pace in this Grand Prix. I just hope that I can pull through the field. And now we have a safety car. It's our first safety car of the race, and I don't think it will be the last either, as these AI cars are being quite reckless on this very first lap. And now cutting to the end of the second lap. And we've got an absolute car park here. We've got Maldonado, Ricardo. pretty much the whole field is stuck at the penultimate corner here of Raskas, and I'm just parking it on the apex. Uh, I don't want to plow through anyone, I don't want any damage. And as you can see there, now the runners in the Grand Prix are dropping like flies. We did have 20, now we're down to 16, now 15 here, as this safety car is now pulling in at the end of this lap. So, now we're into position 8 after a couple cars peeled into the pit lane after that absolute calamity 
that happened at Rascast just a couple laps ago. You guys saw it. That was just absolute madness. And I can't believe the AI started that. But now we're getting ready for a restart here. Apparently uh, it's green flag racing. I just saw a green flag before. But now, okay, now we're getting ready to go. Putting it down in the first gear. Trying to get a nice exit off this final corner. So we can have an attack at Maldonado. Who somehow is still in this Grand Prix. I really would have expected Maldonado to be the instigator of a massive 50 car pile up at turn one, but somehow he's still in this race and he's proving to be a massive obstacle for us uh, as we try to climb through this field. But now cutting to lap six and we're now in position six as 13 runners are now in this Grand Prix. So it seems that the AI are making really big mistakes early on in this Grand Prix and if it continues like this, we could be the only car left. As you can make the move on Maldonado into Raskas, we get the move done fairly cleanly up into position five now. Grosjean is now up ahead for position 4 and you'd have to say that a podium position isn't too far away now as we cut to lap 14. We've got a bit of tyre wear now on our tyres, locking up massively into the Novel chicane. Let's slow it up, try and avoid a penalty there and uh, just avoid any advantage gained. But uh, yeah, that really did kill our tyres there and now we'll be coming in at the end of this lap for our first pit stop of the race. We're making three stops in this race as opposed to our career mode in uh, Monaco in the Force India just a couple weeks ago we opted for the two stop but as you guys saw the prime tires really didn't last and that's why I've sort of run with these tires in the first stint and I've shortened their stint as well so um, we've got the really bad tire out of the way and now for the rest of this race we can look forward to the better tire uh, with better tire wear and uh, just a faster compound as well it's funny how these things work sometimes but uh, here we are for our first pit stop it is 5.5 seconds which isn't too bad when you consider that we did have a, uh, a front wing change as well. But coming out onto the track now, we're in position 6 in front of our teammate Jules Bianchi, who is doing a absolutely fantastic job uh, in the points so far. Now he's in P4 as we cut to lap 21. We managed to undercut a few cars there uh, coming in early, and now we're attacking Grosjean for position 2. Are we going to go up the inside coming into this corner? Yes, we do. We get the car far alongside enough, and now Sergio Perez is right in front of us now on lap 22, and we're going to be uh, trying to have an attack on Sergio Perez very soon. But it looks like we've got a really good run on him coming up the hill, and now he just puts our car in a very, very dangerous position, but we uh, just had to back out of it there. Otherwise, we would have been wiped out of this Monaco Grand Prix. I'm going to settle in behind for now and wait for an opportunity to present itself, but, oh, we just came so close to a disaster there, but... Uh, thankfully, we're still in the Grand Prix. That's all that matters. We just need to think about survival at this stage. Catching up to Sergio Perez again on the uh, Novo Chicane, and he hits the wall. Loses part of his uh, front end plate there, but he's still going uh, crucially. He's still got uh, most of his end plate or his front uh, nose on the car, so uh, he can continue to uh, race in this Grand Prix. But, uh, yeah, very surprising that he managed to survive that. But, uh, yeah, Sergio is very much cracking under the pressure now. It's only going to be a matter of time before we jet, jump him and get his position. So I'm um, thinking about where I might be able to pass him. Maybe up the inside coming into turn one, but we're just not close enough yet. We're going to try and uh, have a nice run out of turn one like we did on the last lap. Are we going to pass him coming around the outside? No, we've hit the wall and we've lost our wing. Oh my God, I, I don't believe I did that. I just got a bit too eager there. And uh, yeah, the wall has proven to be very deadly. And now I've got to limp this thing back into the pits. Otherwise, uh, uh, I could. Uh, well, if I if I try to do it too quickly, then uh, I'm going to lose uh, pretty much uh, one of my wheels. So uh, I've got to do this very slowly, very calmly. Try not to uh, lose my cool here. It's very easy to uh, lose your composure in these uh, situations, but you've just got to get this thing uh, back into the pits as slowly as you can, as safely as possible. And it uh, looks like we've managed uh, to do that as well. So coming into the pits, we're going to put on a, another set of option tyres. This has kind of screwed up our strategy as well because um, getting a puncture, we've uh, lost one of our option set of tyres. So we might need to put on another set of primes later on uh, down the track. We'll have to wait and see on that one. But the pit stop is 5.5 seconds. Not too bad when you consider it was a front wing change as well. But, um, you know, we're not entirely out of the game. I'm not going to get too depressed just yet. Uh, there's always the potential for safety cars uh, further on in the race. But uh, rejoining in front of Maldonado, uh, somehow he's still in this race. But on lap 27, we have a safety car. So now we are back in the game. 
we are going to uh, rejoin on the back of the leaders and we're going to be uh, uh, very much having an attack on these guys as soon as this safety car period is over. And speaking of that, I think the safety car will be coming in at the end of this lap. And yes, my engineer confirms that as well. So, uh, this race is completely turned on its head in the last couple of minutes. Uh, it looked like we were going to be out of the race pretty much, but now we're back in the game. We've got fresh tyres. The AI have old tyres, so we're going to have an, a massive attack on these guys. Hopefully get the lead of the race, pull away, and then we'll manage the tyre uh, wear and the tyre sets later on in this race. So... Uh, this is going to be a very interesting uh, run to the finish line uh, from here on in, in terms of tyre wear, strategy and all that uh, kind of thing. But uh, in the immediate uh, future, we've got to get in front of our team manager, Jules Bianchi, and uh, he's going to hold us up quite a bit if we stay behind him for much longer, because Grosjean, the race leader, um, is going to pull away massively if... Um, you know, we continue to battle our teammate. And I think the safety car was actually caused by... Well, hang on. Looks like we might be having an, have an overtake very soon. But uh, I think Sergio Perez uh, retired or crashed out. And that's what caused the safety car, I believe. So uh, now we're down to seven runners in this Grand Prix. The, uh, the AI in this field are really dropping like flies now. So it really is a, uh, a game of survival. If you can just finish this race, and I think we might be on for a podium well and truly. But we're still stuck behind our teammate. Jules Bianchi gets a poor run out of the Novel chicane. And we get around him on the outside. And uh, I think he did cloud the wall there, but he didn't get any damage. So that was very, very lucky for Bianchi. But now I think he got a, a little bit of an incident with uh, Maldonado there. And uh, now they're holding each other up quite massively now as we cut to lap 33. And now we've uh, caught up to the back of Roman Grosjean. And this is for the race lead. So now we can uh, take our time here, have a think about where we're going to get this move done for Grosjean. Try and suss out where his uh, strengths and weaknesses are. As always, the AI are fairly weak coming out of the Novel chicane. So that's uh, one area we can think about having an attack. Uh, we did pass Grosjean. If you remember to earlier on in the race, we managed to pass him up the inside coming into Mirabeau. So that's one area we can think about uh, in terms of overtakes. If we can get a nice run out of turn one, maybe going up the hill, that's also a possibility. But we'll have to uh, really be patient, think about it. We've got a massive uh, gap to the car behind in Maldonado. So yeah, he's 27 seconds behind. So that's uh, a massive gap. It uh, looks like... I'm uh, going to finish at least second in this race, uh, providing that I finish this race. So, uh, coming into this third sector, and this is where I think my uh, car is at its strongest. The AI seem to be uh, a little bit slower through this third sector, but they are fairly strong uh, in the first sector. So, that's uh, something to think about. So, uh, coming on to the start of lap 36 now, we've got a run on Grosjean coming into turn one, but it doesn't eventuate into anything. He gets a poor run out of turn one. And so we might have a think about going around the outside, up the hill, but uh, yeah, it really wasn't worth it there. I uh, had flashbacks of the uh, earlier incident where I lost my front wing, and I thought, you know what, it's really not worth it at this stage. But coming into Mirabeau, we've got the move done just about. We leave Grosjean some space on the inside, but we've uh, got the uh, the wrong uh, line coming into the hairpin, and yeah, that's, that's always going to happen when you've got the outside line coming into the hairpin. You're just going to get the door slammed shut right on top of you, but here on lap 36, coming into the Novo chicane, we've uh, caught up to Grosjean again, and he's completely lost his front wing, so now he is well and truly out of the running for this Grand Prix, we're going to go up the inside, coming into the swimming pool section, but uh, Grosjean still has uh, a fairly decent amount of uh, high speed grip, uh, ma managing to uh, maintain the, uh, the lead around the outside, but I've just got to be patient here, I know Grosjean is going to pit now, and he does. So uh, there we go. No point in risking trying to pass Grosjean when he's going to pit anyway. We now have the lead. We can pull away, focus on our own race. But uh, as always, Codemasters or, uh, I don't know, whatever kind of force it is, EA Sports, I don't know, they've uh, brought out a safety car just so that I don't uh, have an easy run to the finish line. But uh, we've got a battle with the AI once again after this uh, safety car has uh, run its course. We're coming in for a set of prime tyres. These uh, super soft tyres are fairly worn. I wasn't going to come in just yet, but now that the safety car has come in, I'm going to get a pretty much free pit stop since Grosjean is uh, 24 seconds behind. So 
uh, put on that set of prime tires, get that bad tire out of the way, and then I've got one more set of super soft tires that I can use uh, to the very end. So I'll be pinning around lap 55 to 60. Yeah, that should just about get me to the end of the race uh, fairly comfortably. So uh, here we are on lap 40, just following the safety car in cockpit view, because why not? We've uh, now got three runners in this Grand Prix, so someone else has retired. I think that was Grosjean. So, wow. Down to three runners. We've got Paul DeResta and Charles Peake, who are the remaining runners in this Grand Prix. Guys, can you believe this? We've only got three runners left in this Grand Prix. We started out with 22. We were down to, what, 17 or 19 after the first lap. If you guys have ever had a crazy race like this, then let me know in the comments, but... We're getting ready for a restart here. I'm slowing up the pack just a little bit so we can uh, really attack this main straight and then pull away. I think uh, Charles Peak was a lap car and he was between myself and Duresta. So that's uh, allowed me to get a nice little gap. And uh, there we go. We've got a massive lead already. And now cutting to lap 46. I'm just trying to stretch out that lead. And as you can see there, we've now got two runners in the Grand Prix. Paul DeResta has now retired from the race and cutting to lap 60. Now Charles Peake has retired, so now we are the last man standing. And I haven't realised yet, I was about to come in for my uh, final pit stop. I just realised about now that I'm the last man standing in this Grand Prix. HRT is going to get its first win of the season, and now we are back in the championship. Holy crap, we've won around Monaco in a HRT. Can you believe it? It says we didn't finish, I don't care. We still get the 25 points towards the championship. Charles Peake in a caterum gets second. Paul DeResta, Force India, third. Roman Grosjean and Adrian Sattil. Jules Bianchi, our teammate in sixth. Pastor Maldonado. Uh, stayed out much longer than what he should have. He survived so much longer than what he should have in this Grand Prix. But our championship rivals are nowhere. We are now back in the championship. And this Cucumber Challenge is well and truly back on track to getting us towards the World Drivers title. If you guys enjoyed this video, then leave a like. Comment below if you've ever had a race that's this crazy before. And let me know what is the smallest amount of finishes in a race that you've ever had on a Codemasters F1 game. If you've had one finisher like me, then you are just an absolute legend. But that's been this episode for today, the Monaco Grand Prix, until the Canadian Grand Prix in Montreal. I'll see you guys next time.